Let me just start this video off by saying I might offend some people out here, which is definitely not my intention. If you're black or white, Asian, Arab, Indian, female, disabled, trans, handicapped, midget, human or even a titty bumper, you might be offended by this video. That's why I want to offer you my sincere apology. I'm not fucking apologizing for anything. You all know me. I'm Mr. Muppet. First name Mr. Last name Muppet. You can call me by my first name. We don't know yet is my new assistant. I had to hire somebody because business is booming. His name is Tony and he told me he used to be an assistant for Carl Reimer but he was afraid he would get fired. Anyway Tony, come over here and introduce yourself. Listen up guys, I will give you the straight facts about all of the Battlefield games. I've played each and every game myself, except the first, the last, and a couple in the middle. I'm going to be breaking down 20 years of Battlefield. Now do me a favor, watch the full video, and most important, listen to it as well. Because you are gonna love it. And if you do like this video, like and subscribe. If you don't like the video, like and subscribe. You do not want to miss out. You will regret it if you're not part of my channel before it blows up. Anyway, back to the video. Battle Flop 1942. Once there was a time when most of you weren't even born. It was a dark time. It didn't even have PCs. This was in 1942. That's why they called the first one Battlefield 1942. What? 2002? Why the fuck would they call it 1942? This game was produced and released by Dyson EA. Let me get this out of the way right now. Dyson EA worked together on every Battlefield game. 1942 was made on the Refractor 1 engine. This engine has a typical Battlefield feeling a lot of us still remember and cherish to this day. The game was based on World War II. As a player you could choose between the Axis or the Allies. Back in the first game they already had classes, they differed from game to game. It started off with the Scout, Assault, Medic, Anti-Tank and Engineer. The game mode was Conquest, besides clicking on people's head with your mouse, you were supposed to travel around and hide near opposing team's flags for a while in order to raise your own team's flag. The team with the most raised flags would lose their tickets slower than the other team. The team that would have zero tickets in the end would be the losing team. As you might have heard already, the theme song from the first Battlefield was created back then. That's almost 20 years ago and they're still using the same intro song for Battlefield. Warning, this message is not approved by EA, DICE, YouTube and Barack Obama. If you want to commend this game for being the best in the franchise or the best game ever, then listen up. You can take your thumb and stick it right up your ass and keep pushing until you feel a smush. Push until you smush. After that please continue watching the video and at the end let me know in the comments what you think. Cattlefield Vietnam was released in March 2004 and developed on the same engine as 1942. This game was based on the Vietnam War which has two stars in it, USA and Vietnam. This was the first game where both sides would have different war equipment. Every side would have their own unique weapons. The vehicles would allow you to turn on the radio which everybody in close proximity could hear as well. A nice feature was that choppers could lift up vehicles and even tanks with a tow cable and fly them to a different part of the map. Shooting from vehicles was introduced and this was the first battlefield with a minimap. Back then I have to admit it was easier to make improvements but I do feel that improvements were made to make a better game. Nowadays you always have to wonder if there's not another reason behind certain choices developers make. Somehow the battlefields played in Vietnam were more fun to play. By no means am I saying that they are better games, but definitely more fun. Roger, over and out. Get ready to rock out with the caca. Let me tell you about my favorite Battlefield game, Battlefield 2. Was made on the Refractor 2 engine released in June 2005. Game based on a modern war with multiple classes and features that were ahead of its time. 
Battlefield 2 had a total of 7 different classes, Special Forces, Sniper, Assault, Support, Engineer, Medic and Anti-Tank. This was also the first Battlefield with a Commander, which returned in Battlefield 4 recently as well and might even make its way back into Battlefield 6. The Commander could use a satellite, a UAV, artillery and supply drops. Most of you are familiar with it. In Battlefield 2, commanders would get double scores for wins, so it paid off to do a damn good job. Battlefield 2 also introduced Battle Recorder. It's exactly what you think it is. It's a recording of all your battles, which was used to help create the introduction as well. Speaking of introductions, this was the first game which had squads with a leader. You could spawn back in, but only on your squad leader. Very smart addition to squads was the ability to communicate, which dies solved by the Camaros also the first time they were received unlockable awards as well. Ribbons, badges, medals, rank unlocks. All in all, one of the most innovating games ever made. By the way, did somebody say maps? Oh yeah, the maps. The glorious maps of Battlefield 2. Kubra Dam, Strike at Karkant, Master City, Sharky Peninsula, just to name a couple. The maps were massive battlefields that made it into the game we all loved and praised for many years. Even though the maps had independent parts, they would come together to form a whole without feeling that it was out of place or over the top. These maps just felt excellent. Not only because they were visually appealing, but the design felt balanced. There was a natural flow to these maps. You could almost feel enemies going from the attack to the defense right after a singled out flag had been captured and they had to go back for a recapture. Besides the fluid map progression, maps were giant and there were multiple ways to approach enemies. Nowadays this is very uncommon and you have the generous option to either go left, middle or right. Nowadays you have games with so many weapons and attachments, the combinations alone would rank you a billion options, but everybody's playing with a DMR and akimbo pistols until next season anyway. Battlefield 2 rewarded players with freedom, although this came with a heavy price. Battlefield 2 was not a game for commandos or lone wolves. Teamwork was usually how games were won and this would create a sense of responsibility for players. It was rare to see a squad of 4 snipers. Players would try to balance squads, squad leaders would give orders and the squad would follow these without any questions. Medics would revive only when it was possible and not while under fire. Tony, did you proofread this shit? Although Battlefield 2 is not perfect, we still know that Dolphin Divers and the awful grenade spam plagued the game. But if you compared it to the predecessors of this game, it's undeniably one of the most innovative games of all time. Battlefield 2 was visually appealing at the time. It was fresh and had you wanting for more. It had a steep learning curve, which meant hours of online gameplay and you could still learn more things, unlock more things. Even though you had the same maps, battles were never similar, but most important, Battlefield 2 was incredibly fun. At the end of every round there was a loading screen which was entertained with the presence of the most iconic loading music in any game. During the loading screen you could flip through 4 tabs. These tabs showed you the score list, next map with a briefing, the top 3 scores which would get a gold, silver and bronze medal. But also an overview of which squad did best and who scored best in teamwork. Best teamwork was an actual score tab. Revives, supplies, repairs, heals, assists, driver kills, they would all count towards the teamwork. Now which game nowadays cares about teamwork? Overall, the maps feel balanced. Loading music is addictive. To this day, I can still remember those loading tunes. The gameplay is fun, gunplay is strong, and Adia is great with call-outs from characters in different languages depending on which faction you are playing. Those of you that played Battlefield 2 can remember long-lasting bridge battles in Strike at Karkant. You can remember the rush you felt on Master City when your team lost all the flags and none of your teammates could spawn back in just for you to capture the last flag and bring back the entire team. Amazing times. And there was a good reason why they brought back all those beloved maps to Battlefield 3. If they would have a vote on the best game ever made until 2010, this game would definitely be in my top 3. And if you feel the same way, you know what to do. You hit that like. Hit the like button. Titanfield 
2142, built on the Refractor 2 engine released in October 2006. This game has a futuristic war setting in the battle between Pan-Asia and Europea. It is during a new ice age in a fictional war called the Cold War of the 22nd century. Titan mode was introduced to battlefield. The goal was to destroy the opposite team's Titan. Titans are giant hovering warships which were shielded to avoid damage and unwanted intruders. Players would fight for missile silos on the ground to destroy the shield of the Titans. After destroying the shields, players could keep on shooting missiles or try and board the Titan with pods. Inside the Titan, there were four reactors that needed to be destroyed before access to a main reactor room was gained. From the reactor room, you could blow the Titan up and try to escape in the last 30 seconds before it would explode. It was the first game which would introduce dog tags. Commander would make his return again and they would narrow the choice of classes down to four. Fuck it, let's just skip the talk and go to the end. Tony, skip it. Skip it! Battlefield 2142 was not one of my personal favorites. It felt more like a Star Wars game instead of Battlefield. It was over the top and the characters look weird to me. That's why I just tried to create my own game every time I played. I would mute my game and every time I shot my weapons, I would create the sound effects myself. Guns, grenades, kills, deaths, missiles, robots, anything. This is how I played Battlefield 2142. Battlefield Bad Construction This game was the first and only game to be built on Frostbite 1.0 engine released in June 2008 on consoles only. DICE created Frostbite with Destruction in mind. Destruction brought a whole new strategy to Battlefield and was so much fun. Because of its release on console, there were only 24 players in multiplayer instead of the normal 64 on PC. However, the engine of this game was so bad that if you slammed the doors of a building, the building would collapse. They introduced rush mode in the form of gold rush, a multiplayer mode of attackers versus defenders. One team defends crates with gold and the other attempts to destroy them. Once the crates are destroyed, more of the map is shown and new crates appear. For the first time in Battlefield there was a story mode too. The story was humoristic, which fits the lethal side of war all too well. The game was set in the near future and focused on a fictional war between USA and Russia in a fictional country named Who Gives a Fuck. Bad Company gets great ratings and the most important thing that reviewers mention about this game is that it's fun to play. It has its flaws but the single player is enjoyable and the multiplayer keeps players coming back for more. In the end that is what the game is supposed to be about. I can't remember Battlefield 5 feeling fun for a second. DICE should have a good look at their previous games if they want to make Battlefield 6 into a success. That company has its flaws, but it's so goddamn enjoyable. The single player is funny as fuck, and the multiplayer, good old titty bumping. Well, look at this Eastern European ugly motherfucker. Hey Tony, was the fake apology for uh, Russians as well? Battle Flop 1943. This is actually the same game as Battle of Flop 1942, except the only ones that played it are the devs from DICE. I've heard they created this game below the radar as a call for help. All DICE employees were held hostage underground and they were forced to keep working on Battlefield 3. So they actually created this game to try and reach out to gamers all over the world and ask them for help. Some of them did escape 
because they got fired for creating too many unwanted bugs. Too bad nobody else ever played this game except for the DICE employees. I have heard that the employees are still being held in an unknown location underground somewhere. Battlefield 1943 was released on Frostbite 1.5 engine in July 2009. Conquest mode was still the only mode available at launch, however the devs had a little surprise locked behind certain requirements. 43 million community kills were needed before they would release a new mode called Air Superiority. The mode wasn't received well because of a lack of map variation and bugs. After reaching the community objective, 1943 had two modes and only four maps. In 1943 the only classes available were infantrymen, riflemen and scouts. Destruction made its way back to 1943, however it didn't feel like a complete battlefield game. They didn't release it for full price, but it wasn't a full Battlefield game as well. The lack of support for the game received was due to the development of the upcoming Battlefield 3. Battlefield Bad Construction 2 Released on Frostbite 1.5 engine in March 2010. One of the most beautiful games ever seen in that time. The game was and still is a great game. In Bad Company 2 all buildings were fully destructible. Destroying buildings to the ground was one of the most fun things to do as well. DICE made sure Bad Company 2 was all about fun. Multiplayer, but a single player as well. The game came with amazing maps, weapons, vehicles, and also one of the greatest DLCs ever made for any game. Battlefield was always competing with Call of Duty, and the two games were always compared. They still are to this day, but this game had its own feel to it. It looked different, and it felt different. It was definitely Battlefield. But it had its own appeal. It was bad company and everybody seemed to love it. The game was launched with a story mode as well and overall it was incredibly well received by the community and many call it the best battlefield of all time. Personally I won't call it the best battlefield but it's in my top 3 definitely. And if you feel the same way, you know what to do. You hit that like button now. Hit it. I haven't talked about any DLC yet but for this game I will make an exception. Battlefield Bad Construction 2 Vietnam. Fears are nothing more than a state of Get mind. off me, Tony. No, I am doing the voice. I can't remember who said that. I think it's funny. Listen. You, everyone's scared here. You were just an assistant. You can see it in their eyes. I am the boss. It eats away at you. Sit down, I'm doing the voice. It ages you. I'm tired. I walk, walk around, around no. um, everyone, everyone does. does. Focused on one, one thing. Staying Stay alive. alive. There's battle lines being drawn. And nobody's right if everybody's wrong. I think it's time we stop. Children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Battle Neck 3 This game was amazing. They even released several updates which made this game so good. One update was excellent. They made characters gigantic. It wasn't even necessary to aim anymore. These characters would be big as a quarter of the map. Another update made their necks so long you didn't even need a sniper to see enemies. You could just lie down and stick your neck into enemy territory. Created on the Frostbite 2.0 engine, released in October 2011. This game is played in a modern war setting. This was one of the first games that made realism look realistic. The marketing campaign for this game was amazing. Teasers, trailers, gameplay, everything left everybody wanting for more. Mainly because Battlefield 3 was way ahead of its time and it still looks better than some games released almost 10 years later. Cold War should be ashamed. For example, Battlefield 3 has amazing character animations and takedowns. The audio is amazing, gunplay feels realistic, recoil feels real for every weapon. There's so much destruction, debris flying around feels like you're in an actual war. Besides that, the characters constantly react to what's going on around them which makes it feel even more realistic. I could go on and on and on, but if you're watching this video, chances are big that you've already played the multiplayer part of this game yourself. The single player campaign is actually very good for the Battlefield game. 
Not really a fan of the whole story, but the missions itself are good and memorable. Play the single player mode. It's good, it's amazing, looks fantastic, still to this day, you won't regret it. Co-op is also very fun to play. You do need a friend though. Don't ask your real life friends, fuck these idiots man. Head over to the Battlefield Discord and find yourself a real friend. Anyway, back to multiplayer. The destruction of buildings was toned down a bit compared to Bad Company 2. Walls can be blown up and debris can kill players. However, not all buildings can be brought to the ground anymore to provide a bit more balanced structure in the maps. Battlefield 3 brings back modes like Conquest, Rush, Team Deathmatch and more. You might not even know Battlefield 3 from playing the game, but from the YouTube videos. Since this is where the only in Battlefield moments started on YouTube. These are all of the insane plays which usually involved a lot of skill, high IQ plays or just insane amounts of luck. There are some downsides to playing this game. Tiny bugs here and there. The launcher is a web browser on PC. And if you start playing it 10 years after release, you might have a rough time online. Although there are new friendly servers as well. I personally played the Alpha, the Beta, PlayStation 3 version and the PC version. All of them were great and some maps are iconic. Operation Metro is insanely fun in rush mode. Strike at Tarkan Remastered from Battlefield 2 is perfect. First time you're a rush mode attacker in Damavon Peak and you have to jump off from the helipad and parachute down to the next part of the map. Makes you wonder why no other game has maps like this. It is insane that a game that is 10 years old is so creative compared to games now. Did somebody say Caspian Border Antenna Falling in Multiplayer? I could go on how I love Battlefield 3, but I won't. Boring Field 4. This game is so boring. Name one good map it released with. Don't worry, I'll wait. Twitch has even deleted the game because there weren't any gamers that wanted to watch this anymore. Oh yeah, let's talk about gamers for a bit. Hold up, hold up, I got something to say. Tony, cut the music. I want to talk about gamers for a bit. Gamers are filthy addicts. No matter what, they will find a way to keep gaming. Take away their internet, they will play story mode. Take away their mouse, they will play 2D platformers on the keyboard. Take away their balls, they will play Fortnite. Even if you take away their PC, they will play on mobile and start streaming PUBG on Twitch and suddenly gain the ability to speak fluent Indian and gain 1 billion followers overnight. The point of the story is, gamers are filth. They are the scum of this earth. They always got something smart to say and there are a lot of them. Problem is, you can't take away their devices because then they will be harder contained than people on a corona curfew in the Netherlands. We, gamers, are disgusting. Some of us don't even look or sound human. Look at this one. Can somebody tell me what the hell this is anyway? What is this video about again? Need for battle speed. Tony, get it out of here. Just remove it. Cut it. Tony, get it out of here. This is not battlefield. Get it out of here. Piece of sh Lost Count of Field 1. Dice. Why did you go back to 1? The only good reason to go back to 1 is if you would want to prepare us for an upcoming remake of the best game ever made. Battlefield 2. Battlefield 1 was built on the Frostbite 3.0 engine and released on October 2016. It takes you all the way back to World War 1. The single player mode introduces war stories. These stories are short emotional stories about what could have happened in the war and how people in it survive or don't. It tries to shine a light on their feelings during the time of war. If you're into World War 1 games, this game is definitely a must buy. In multiplayer they introduced Operations mode. A mix of rush and conquest which progresses through different maps. It's actually a big hit in my opinion. If the attacking team loses a round, it gets help from a behemoth. These are giant vehicles which will give the team a massive advantage. Personally, I think the behemoths are too much of an advantage since it really does take a lot of teamwork to take that thing out. There are a total of three. There's a zeppelin, an armored train and a battleship. There's also a mode called War Pigeons. Random pigeons drop in a box on the map and you need to hold on to the box as long as it takes you to write a message. If the message is written, you can attach it to the pigeon and release him. If a team successfully releases three pigeons, then the match is over. The pigeons can be shut down by the enemy and if that happens, it will not count for a successful release. 
This mode is fun for a while too. They created another mode called Supply Drop. This new mode is inspired by the huge areas the eastern front of World War 1 took place on. Teams will have to fight over supply drops. If successfully captured, it will give the capturing team all sorts of goodies, ammo, vehicles, etc. The team that captured the most points in the end wins. They brought back Air Assault from 1943, at the time it was no success. This game mode centers on aerial combat and is only available on two maps. Each vehicle destroyed will grant your team points. On the map Racer's Edge, only single seat planes are available, while on another map called London Colon, a wide variety of planes and even a Zeppelin are available. Battlefield 1 is overall a great game, single player is a bit different than usual, but it pays off. If you like historic shooters you can spend hours on this game. I personally think they went a bit overboard with the behemoths but it's not a big deal breaker. The only bad thing about this game is that you can encounter cheaters online. But which game nowadays doesn't have cheaters? Battle fucking vagina. Battle Royale, oh my god, that's gonna be so cool. It's gonna kill PUBG, it's gonna kill Call of Duty, it's gonna kill H1Z1, Casino Royale, and all those shitty Battle Royales out there. Look at this trailer, it looks amazing. Fire, and tanks, and wow, and fire, and wow. It's dog shit. Wow, you fucked us good on this one, dice. This game is whack. What the fuck? Battlefield 5 was created on the Frostbite 3 engine and released in November 2018, a World War II game which I haven't played. I've only played the beta and I was not impressed at all. Gameplay and gunplay seemed good, animations looked nice, but it was boring and it didn't have any appeal. The map they released was terrible and I did not enjoy it at all. The first battle royale game in this series is called Firestorm, which was actually a big flop too. Also, the intro is boring. Why is it so long? Honestly, who cares about this story? The game is boring. Listen to me, EA, DICE. We are not soldiers, okay? We are gamers. Some gamers rage quit. Some gamers are cheaters. Some gamers look like they can barely carry their own weight, let alone a massive LMG with the ammo attached to it. We're not soldiers, okay? We want a fun experience, not a recreation of a war. It is not fun for anybody. Okay, enough ranting. I personally felt like they tried to make a sequel to Battlefield 1, and although I did enjoy Battlefield 1, this game doesn't feel fun at all. If I'm going to play a game, it needs to be fun. Even horror games are more fun than this game. I played Resident Evil 3 Remake on my PlayStation and it was a lot of fun. DICE and EA need to step it up for Battlefield 6. By the way, my next video will be a special on Battlefield 6. I've watched every video online about Battlefield 6 and created an overview with what we can expect and what not to expect. Ranging from story mode to multiplayer and matchmaking. Subscribe to me right now because you do not want to miss that. Congratulations. You're one of the legends that made it all the way to the end. Now subscribe and like this video. Let's end this on a serious note. I want to salute each and every one of you. You are all legends. Keep on doing what you do and keep an eye out for me in the future. The future is soon though. Next week I'm going to do a breakdown on Battlefield 6. You do not want to miss that. Hit it Tony. Tony hit it. Don't...